in theory, this will also be recording, which in theory means that I can share it later on. So it can go on the YouTubes, just in case anyone decides that they want to watch my stupid face on the internet. Trying to decide what I want to do, and I've got absolutely no idea. I'm going to start by making the really obvious choice of painting a mer dragon in sea colours. So that. These are the paints I use. I don't even know if there's anyone here to see this. It's totally not. It doesn't matter if you see it. Look at the thing. Um, game color, the model, painting like Warhammer figures and all that good stuff. They do settle a little bit, so if you try them, shake them. Otherwise, you just end up with like water, which is rubbish for painting with, surprisingly. Okay, they are super good though. Um, some colours give better coverage than others, but that's fine. You just figure it out. Most of the bluey green ones are okay. Um, the because there's different kinds. So there's whoop, like this one, which is game color, and there's this one, which is model color. And some of these ones are a little bit dodgy, and most of these ones are very good. So you need to try them and figure it out, basically. I've been using these for a while now and they've got really good coverage. So like I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see this, but like a lot of them only take one coat, it's a really weird angle to paint that. But so yeah, they're usually good. Um, I do use other paints too, but these are the best ones. They're a bit more expensive. Um, like, oops. these are other ones. Craft acrylic, which are really good to have around if you do lots of crafty stuff. Um, and they're pretty cheap and you get much bigger bottles as you can like that's a lot more paint but they're not usually quite as good like they're fine for crafty stuff but they don't seem to be quite as good at sticking to polymer clay but if you've got the patience to do like loads of <sighs> does match my hair properly matches my hair but yeah, if you've got the patience to do like multiple coats of paint, it's okay. But I don't have the patience to do multiple coats of paint because I get really bored. So these ones are better. I did 
ask anyone if they had any questions. I do have a list. So I will go through that. But I didn't have any questions about materials. Um, so that seems... Uh, focus. That's fine, that's what glue is for. That's exactly what glue is for. Um, so, materials, obviously, it's polymer clay. Um, I use Sculpt B. So, this one is good. Um, this is Sculpey Medium Blend, and you can't really find it in the UK. Um, I buy it from Amazon, but it comes from the US. So I don't know why that is, because I, I think Sculpey is based in Germany? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, but that's quite firm, and it's Medium Blend. But the firmness is very handy, particularly polymer clay doesn't like heat. So the firmer the clay is, the less squishy it gets. If you've got warm hands or if you're trying to sculpt in the summer, God forbid, it becomes a total mushy disaster. So you can see I do their main bodies and heads in the medium blend. Because they're less likely to squish. And then I do the details in the standard Super Sculpey, which I've been using forever and it's really, really good. Um, it bakes well. It's nice to work with. It's all good. You can buy coloured clay, which is also lots of fun. I have been asked before why I prefer to paint my figures rather than using coloured clay um, and the answer to that is well there are multiple answers to that uh, the main one being that um, if you use coloured clay or any clay uh, you end up with bits of fluff and dust and hairs. I have two cats so basically it ends up like not being great if they're shedding. So it ends up with bits of stuff in if it's like if you paint the clay it's not so bad but if you use coloured clay and you don't paint it or anything afterwards you have to be really like seriously on top of how clean your stuff is like cleaning off your hands with alcohol like every two minutes and then cleaning off the figure when you're done and it is way too much hassle. Also, also um, using like non-coloured clay and then painting it you get cool effects so you can do neat stuff with it. I find it easier to do cool stuff with it if you just do all the painting. I mean, obviously, you can paint cool effects onto coloured clay. Like, that's fine. That's the thing you can do. But I figure you may as well go all one way or the other. I don't know. I'm not judging anyone that does it the other way. Just this is how I like to do it. And that's the cool thing about arts and crafts. There is no... Well, I mean, there's sometimes a right and a wrong way. But... Mostly, there's no right or wrong way. If it works for you, it's safe and it achieves a good result that you like, then that is the right way. Everyone has their own ways of doing things and I think that that is super cool. There's so many pots and jars here. I'm trying to wash my paintbrush and things that don't. Um, all the questions, I've got like a massive list here of questions. So I've been asked by a couple of people, why dragons? You know what? I don't know. I just like dragons. 
Um, my mum always liked dragons. She used to have some pretty awesome, I mean she still has them, but when I was growing up she used to have some really pretty friggin sweet figurines around and about. Um, she used to have like a massive one, like this big, and it was a big manny dragon who was like all curled up on herself, and it was like blue and purple, it was amazing. Um, so yeah, I don't know, maybe inherited, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, my, my first dragon that I ever sculpted, which I will totally have to post again, um, was not very good, <laughs> admittedly. But um, I'd been inspired by uh, dragons and beasties. Um, one that everyone knows, and she's amazing, this stuff is so cool. Um, so I'd been inspired by her, I was doing like a, I was trying to craft something every day or every week or something, I don't know, that, that was a ridiculous idea, but um, yeah, and I had a bunch of clay, because I, I already did clay work, but it was like little, like, sweets and cupcakes and stuff like that. Anyone familiar with my previous work with Ra? Yes, that's what it was called, Ra. Um, will know of that work. Um, it's a little bit more gamey, I guess. But um, yeah, so I, I had lots of clay and I was like, I'm gonna try and make a dragon. And it was huge and um the head was way too heavy and it kept falling over it was it was a bit of a disaster but um it's still in the family i gave it to my mum for her birthday probably the worst birthday present i've ever given her uh but it, it, it's still about, we had to put a massive amethyst crystal on its tail so it didn't fall over. So that's kind of the origins. That 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 is the Starlight Sanctuary origin story. There you go. Um, so yeah, um, I did my first Sunny Con not long after that and I made a few maybe like five or six dragons who are also not very good to anyone who has one of those dragons I apologize send me a photo please I would love to see them if they've survived um so yeah they were all I mean they were kind of cute but they, they were also incredibly drunk because they didn't I wasn't using armatures at this point so they were all just falling over. It was, it was not great. Not great. But they developed then, and I learned how to use armatures. Which was super important. If you're going to sculpt, use an armature. It's so much easier. They <laughs> use less clay magic little skeletons for whatever it is you're making. Of course figuring out the armature if you're doing a complex piece is half a battle. Well, that's certainly how it feels when you're making it anyway. Another question that we got. Which artist has inspired me the most during my time sculpting? That is, I was going to say that's really hard, but I've actually just spent a lot of time focusing on my inspirations in a project that I've done for university. So um, my main inspirations, um, it all started, like I said, with Dragons and Beasties. She was the, the first point um, 
but now uh Magueno, Maddie of Magueno Art Dolls. Um, her work is all amazing. And she does it while looking after a croft, like a little farm, which is really cool. Uh, Beastly's, I think, I think Leslie is probably, probably my, like, I want to be her when I grow up. Sounds really lame. But her stuff is all just so amazing. She has these fantastic fantasy creatures. And the way that she can do um, the beastlies, which are her little coloured clay critters, like Sculpey, Emo critters, um, which always sell out instantly. And then to be doing gallery work with bigger stuff like that, that just sounds like the dream to me. Um, and she does this really cool, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a, like a, a women's getaway. And he, like, she takes people out into the woods, which sounds really creepy, but is not. Um, yeah, she takes people out into the woods and they do loads of stuff and get inspired, like going for long walks and drawing in the middle of nowhere, which I would totally love to go to if it wasn't on the other side of the planet. If anyone can see the comment section, that is my other half demanding to be recognised, staying very quiet on the stream but very vocal in the chat box over there, literally right over there. Rude. <laughs> I'm laughing, but he is actually a massive source of inspiration for me. Most of his ideas are really good. So, and even if his ideas aren't very good, which usually they are, but it's nice to be able to have someone to bounce ideas off of, like if I come up with ideas, to be able to turn to someone who totally gets it and be like, is this really shit? Or might it actually work? It's cool to have someone like that around. It's good. And the baby's dry. A brown dragon also. I'm doing a brown dragon, possibly the first ever. Something else that's cool about this paint as well is that it's dry. It dries really fast. And look at that. I don't know if you can see. That is like you don't need that's it covered. It doesn't really need another coat, so I'm so glad I found these paints. I believe, actually, because I found these paints through another artist, and it was Little Miss Delicious, who does really cute, like really cute jewellery and stuff, um, like lots of food themed things, which I am so here for. Uh, yeah, if I post this on YouTube, I'll link all of the people below that I've mentioned, because if you don't know them already, they're totally worth checking out. For sure. I'm trying to remember what colour I use now. This one, I think. What else have we got? What has been your most significant development in your sculpting style. Okay, so this one is going from quite big 
dragons. They were like maybe four inches tall. I don't think I have any. In fact, now I do. I have one. I'm going to go get it. Now I'm going to show you because this is drastic. So she's a bit dusty. Because she's mine and I love her and I've kept her. But this type of. This one's actually resin cast, but she's based on lots of the. Uh, so she's, she's quite big. And this is the size that they are now. Like, they're quite different. Um, there's nothing wrong with these. But these are just so much more fun to make. Little ones. How much? I, I don't know. I don't know why. They're small and they're cute and they're fun. And I can sit them on things and in things. So like at the moment I got bottles that's full of shells and stuff. Um, vases. So yeah, they're just they're nice to. It, it's a nice size to work with, and I think it's a size that I'm going to stick with from now on. So I much much prefer it. I mean, I would like to do bigger sculpts again, but for now. But now I am sticking with the little babies. And the art dolls, that's kind of another development, but that's a, more of like a splitting of paths rather than a jumping to a totally different path. What else have I got? Out of all of your creations, which has been the most challenging to make? That's a tough one, I don't know. Um, it's really hard because I enjoy everything that I make so much it doesn't really feel like a challenge, I guess. Um, the wyvern um, who I absolutely adored and whilst I'm really glad that he went to a really nice home and he did, I've seen him, he's settled, um, but I would have quite happily kept him. <laughs> um, he was a bit of a challenge, more logistically though because he was, um, he had a much more complex armature because his wings were well, I mean, he was a wyvern, so he was a wyvern. Um, but I had to use wire mesh for his wings. Thank you. My rest needs to bring me tea. Um, yeah, so I had to use wire mesh for his wings to support the sort of membrane structure. Surprise cat. Um, so yeah, he was more complicated, but I, I don't know if I'd use the word challenging. I, just, I don't think I would apply that to anything, really. Um, what else? Which is my favourite to make. That one's really hard too. Um, I'm not sure. I've really been enjoying the art dolls. They're quite fun. Um, I'm hoping to have lots of those at SunnyCon, actually. So I'm going to have like a little horde of them. Um, <laughs> Shaggy cat. 
Uh, but so I think the galaxy dragons are really fun to make. So you have to just splat paint everywhere. For anyone who's coming to my um, panel at SunnyCon, where I'm going to show you how to paint a dragon, which I'm sure you could probably all figure out for yourself, but I'm going to be doing this there. So ask questions and stuff. Um, I'm hoping to show you how to paint a galaxy dragon because everyone really likes them and they're really fun to do. So yeah, galaxy dragons I think are probably my favourite. I try not to do loads and loads of them because I don't want to just overwhelm the world with galaxy dragons. Although that might not be such a bad thing. I'm trying to pick colours for all these babies and it's really hard. Um, what else have I got? I had a very strange question from someone on Instagram. Um, and they asked me if a random guy asked me to kick him in the balls as hard as I possibly could for a YouTube video, would I do it? And the answer to that is no, because I'm a nice person. And while sometimes I might want to kick people in the balls, I never act on it. So no, random person from Instagram, no, I would not, ever. Let's see if I've got any more questions. I don't have any more questions, it's going to have to ramble. Trying to choose colours, I'm trying not to be really obvious. And it's not working at all. I feel like I do a lot of blue dragons. But is that a bad thing? I don't know. I kind of want to do a galaxy now, because I said galaxy dragons. I'm going to do a galaxy dragon. what I pour my paint into. You can tell it's well loved and well used. I do try to clean it out every now and again. But because it's acrylic paint, you just build up the layers and then you like chisel it off. Which is kind of fun. And a galaxy dragon on a bottle. Pretty much all the stuff that I stream between now and SunnyCon will be available at SunnyCon. So if you see me painting something that you really, really love, come by my store and see it. I say that, there's no promises that it'll be there. But you can come by anyway and say hello. I'm open to that. But also, if you don't know what SunnyCon is, something else I'll link in the YouTube video if I ever upload it. It's 
Sunny God is a pretty well established convention now, which used to be held in Sunderland, hence the Sunny Con, and is now held in Newcastle in St James's Park legendary football stadium. It was held there for the first time last year and we were in a really good place and it was super amazing. But because I've done every single one and I would really love to keep doing every single one um, I get a lot of people coming to the stall that already have dragons um, and one of my favourite stories someone came to my stall one year after buying a dragon from me the previous year um, and she told me that the dragon that she bought had become their Dungeons and Dragons mascot Which I thought was amazing. That's really cool. I hope he keeps bringing lots of luck. But it's always nice to see dragons in their new home. So if you have a dragon, absolutely take a photo and send it to me. I love that. Please do that. always brightens my day when people do that. people here and I don't want you to be bored so if you have a question ask me or if you've missed out on a question that I've already answered I'll answer it again I'm okay with that so I'm quite happy if you want to know anything about how I make this stuff or where I get materials from or if anything um, I am totally happy to share what little knowledge I have because um, my, my view is that I've learned everything that I know from the internet basically um, so all I'm doing like you're, I'm not worried about people copying me or I, I don't know some people don't like to share information because they feel like I don't know, it's, it's bears and I don't know. But yeah, so if you have questions about any materials or any processes or anything, I will always, always do my best to answer. Because like I said, I am fully self-taught from the interwebs, largely from watching other people do stuff. I've never really watched stuff on YouTube, the University of YouTube, but DeviantArt tutorials, I looked at an awful, awful lot. So many DA tutorials. I don't actually use DeviantArt anymore. I think I know people who do. But I kind of moved away from it. I don't know 
know why. I made some pretty cool friends on there, but when I moved away from home, I didn't have much internet and I didn't really do much art. I suppose I kind of fell out of sync with it. It's also a bit of a weird website. I feel like I can engage more directly with people through things like Facebook and Instagram. Like with, with customers and fans, which is a weird thing to say, but fans. Still feels very strange that there are fans of my work because this is literally just me sitting at my desk with all this shit behind me. Making dragons. But if people like that, it's fine by me. I feel like I'm doing this all really slowly, but that's probably a good thing. this guy. Seems for an art doll. But I haven't decided what colour yet. I'm gonna look at my fizz and see see what I've got, what I would like him to, to have. Oops. Don't drop the dragons. finish painting these tails before the paint dry out. So I don't want to waste any. Don't like wasting things. Especially not craft supplies. Mm -mm. You know what? I'm gonna do match this colour. I have a commission for this colour, but this is not him. Fair 
anyone ever has any ideas of things that you would like to see me doing on a stream. Like if you want to see crochet or I don't know, sketching, painting. Feel free to mention it and I should try and come do it. I really want to try and get more streaming done over the summer because I am finished with university now. I have officially handed in my final foundation degree project. Ah. So I've got a few weeks until SunnyCon. So up until then I'm gonna try and stream some well sunny con dragons. So I'm hoping to have lots and lots of things for people to look at. My main aim for this year is to hit a hundred dragons. I want to take a hundred dragons to Sunny Fun. Because I nearly managed it last year, but not quite. I think I got up to about 78. Which is close, but not good enough. So fingers crossed I can pull it off this year. That does mean I'm going to be super, super busy. Super busy. But I am still going to stream. I'm going to try and make it a regular thing. If you guys can put up with me. Witchering on like some deranged fool. difficult to handle these heads because no one to hold them. be doing Moogle. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Not really. Um, Moogle and Chocobo art dolls. But you're going to say that really super cool. Just saying. I'm also also going to be doing a um, white chocobo, one single white chocobo art doll and he will be going in the SunnyCon charity auction. So be there and spend lots of money because I can't remember right this very second who the chosen charity is this year, but they are always, always worthy causes. And it's usually hilarious. Even if you're not bidding on anything, go and watch, because it's funny.
I think one year there was an actual fight between two mechs for an item. So if you don't want to miss out on that kind of drama, go to the Sunny Farm auction. And try and get the white chocobo done really super soon as well so that we can share it around and get the word out. Because I'm really excited. I've never made anything specifically for the Sunny Con auction before. I've always donated stuff, but I've never made anything for it, like with it in mind. So this should be quite good. And then all the ones on the stall will just, just be standard yellow chocobos. Not that there's anything wrong with yellow chocobos. Galaxy bits on here now. I really love Galaxy Dragons. So for most of the standard galaxy dragons, I know they're in like loads of different colours, but the go-to is these. So this is I think lilac and pink and blue and white, obviously. So I have this totally mangled paintbrush which I refuse to throw away because I can use it for like scrubbing colours into things I do often feel like the dragons are a bit rubbish, but there's certain stages where they start looking good, like when you add the eyes. Not even when you add the eyes, it's when you add the white dots on the eyes and they just come alive and they stop looking rubbish. <laughs> when you glaze them as well. Actually for glazing, I use this. I only just started using this particular one, but it's the same thing that I've been using forever. 
and the important bit is this polyurethane gloss varnish which that's not going to focus but that's what it is polyurethane gloss varnish and you can like that's the craft one um so where i buy it in hobby craft uh it's with the craft acrylic paints that's where it lives but if you feel like you're going to use loads you can also buy it in big tins or slightly smaller tins but bigger than this um you can buy them in like diy stores so if you went to b and q they would have some and it works really good it gets really shiny and I usually go for three coats um, I never do any less than two but always 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 three Tantius is here, you finally got it working. Apparently the stream is temperamental. Of which I am not surprised. I promise. So this is kind of tricky because you want to put it on so that it's wet enough to like blend out but you don't want to put so much on that you end up blending it everywhere. Tricky. If I end up putting too much on, it always ends up on my hands. So this is how you can tell I've been blending stuff, because it's all on my hands. And I often forget to wash it off, so I'll go out places with paint all over my hands. People thinking I'm mad. Paint covered lady. Which I am, but people don't need to think about. these bits need to be layered up as well to get the opacity that you want because sometimes you don't want it very big very transparent even okay. let's do pink this pink is actually called squid pink squid pink which always makes me think of 
the little pink squid thing from Finding Nemo. Which I'm okay with. I just squeeze that way too much. See, I really love acrylic paints in these bottles for so many reasons, but you end up with lots of wastage. I mean, look at that. That's all paint I haven't used. It's really tricky trying to get the right amount of paint out of the bottle. Especially sometimes, and a warning about these, if nothing's coming out and you know that there's paint in there, don't squeeze it as hard as you possibly can because then you just end up with way too much paint that you can't use. I've been there and I've done that. Of other questions to sort of ask myself, and I don't know. Um, sort of covered materials. All of my fur is faux fur. when I make gloves I always use acrylic yarn so there's no wool which means that if you have sensitive skin you shouldn't have an allergic reaction to it because wool can make people react not everyone is okay with wool which is kind of a shame so really like cool. I've been spinning my own, which is really cool. Well, I don't have my own sheep. Then they go for the sheep. An alpaca. An alpaca would be cool. But not a llama, because I mean. Starts coming together when you put white on it. So I'll see that very well. Did 
dipping my brush in the wrong colour paint. ready for all the stars now but first I need to move all the other dragons out of the way so that they don't get all covered in white speckly bits Why do blues and purples dominate your dragon colour palette? Um, I don't know, they just kind of do. Uh, I really like the colour blue, so it kind of dominates everything. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I find that purple dragons sell quite well too, because people like purple. Purple is a very popular colour amongst dragon lovers. So, I mean, I like purple anyway. But, uh, like the fact that they sell <laughs> is always good. Um, I, if a certain colour doesn't sell very well, I'll tend to avoid it. Uh, because I don't want to be stuck with, like, loads and loads of dragons that no one wants. Um, pink dragons don't usually sell very quickly. Red dragons don't sell as quickly here as they did in Wales for obvious reasons. Though to be honest I didn't sell an awful lot of stuff in Wales because people are different with their money there. really carefully she has stars now which you also can't really see very well because it keeps trying to focus on me <laughs> that's my favorite part of doing that splashing white paint everywhere I'm particularly satisfying if I've just got a whole row of dragons book at a time. <laughs> Hi 
kind of think there's anything else I can squeeze into this video. Because I kind of feel like I'm running out of things to say. Probably a good one to mention since I broke this baby's tail off. Bad face. Um, this is really good for most things. Um, but also, it's super glue gel, which means it doesn't run off onto basically everything. Which is the reason that I never bothered using super glue. But this one doesn't do that, so I can actually use it without worrying about sticking myself to everything. But the E6000 is good for, because um, super glue isn't very good for sticking to metal, whereas the E6000 will. So it's handy to have both. Also the Gorilla Glue sticks super fast. Yes, I am hoping to do the children's book after I finish the Kickstarter. I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> Rusty's just thrown his arms in the air. Um, no idea what it's going to be, but it is something that we would like to do. It'll probably be a um, joint venture between the two of us. So, because it was his idea, so I'm not doing all the work, basically. That is something that we would like to do. Um, I would also like to revisit the idea of a colouring book. Um, I did do one for the second Sunny Con, um, but it wasn't very good. Uh, and I think I've pinned down my style enough now to be able to turn out one that looks a lot better so hopefully maybe for next sunny con there will be a coloring book um that i actually ended up giving away all the last ones because no one wanted them so i just gave them to kids in cool costumes instead which was cool that was actually really nice to do yeah so um children's book on the cards maybe, a uh, colouring book also on the cards, um, the field guide is very close to being finished now. Um, I also want to possibly do, if I have the interest, some sort of um, like themed dragon subscription or blind box type thing I think would be kind of cool because um, what's happening basically is that um, now that I've finished my foundation degree I am going to be going on to do uh, a top up um, for a BA which is called creative enterprise which basically means that I can do whatever the heck I want for an entire year. So um, I'm hoping to use that time to fully plunge myself 
into Starlight Sanctuary because I've never really had the opportunity. Um, I've always been working or doing uni for the last few years so it'll be really nice to dedicate myself a bit more time-wise. Um, I mean I'll have a dissertation and stuff to do but otherwise I mean, to be honest though, that's going to be an awful lot of procrastination and then me eventually doing it is how I work. So, yeah, hopefully lots more time, lots more things I want to do. I've thought about doing enamel pin badges as well, but I don't know if they're sort of coming to the end of the, I don't know. I mean, everyone always likes badges, but are the enamel pins slowly losing their luster? I don't know. Because they've been super trendy for a while now, and I'm wondering if they're starting to dip off. Dragon Sums, that would be cool. Little sausagey plushies of dragons, that would be neat. There's another inspirational artist, BZ Art. Her stuff is super cool. She does really nice things. Plushies. Lots of plushies. Very cool stuff. I don't think there's other people to just throw out there. See if I already mentioned. Um, I mentioned Beasties. And I mentioned Maguino. And I mentioned Dragons and Beasties. Um, Emily Sculpts is a big one. Her stuff is amazing um, and complex and detailed and she casts it all in resin and it just looks super super good and I don't know how she does it. Um, so yeah, Emily Sculpts. And um, a recent favourite is a little business called My Arm Can Fly and she does needle felted um, like critters. Um, she has these things called dream snakes. Dream snakes and they're really cool. Really, really cool. Um, needle felting is something else that I wanted to try, but I feel like I have too many hobbies now. Um, she is not the person that did my mounted dragon head. That person is called Claws and Fangs. I'm pretty sure. Claws and Fangs. Um, and her stuff is also very nice, but I have not seen much from her recently. But I think she is another one of us, of course, who is doing many things. So I think she's working and crafting, and sometimes the work bit overtakes the crafting, which is sad and a shame. But that's life. You got to pay the bills. I think of other people. Ooh, something else I want to do, like really, really, really bad, is um, ceramic dragon related things. Yes, ceramic dragon related things. I've been taking classes and I'm not very good right now, but I will be. <laughs> I'm determined. Um, what I want to do is I want to create a flat backed um, dragon design, uh, so like in a little pose or something. I want to come up with a few different ones, and I want to I want to try and mold them um, in silicon so that I can cast them in resin, and I want to mold them uh, in plaster as well so that I can use them as a push mold so that I can then apply them to things like mugs 
um, which will be really cool because I really, really, really love ceramics now. <laughs> so to be able to apply it to um, a starlight sanctuary scenario would be really, really cool. I'll be itching to do that. Um, the resin ones, uh, I would like to do necklaces. Um, that sort of thing. Which I think would be pretty neat and then they could be painted up all pretty and stuff. Apologise if you can hear my cat making really weird noises. Because that is the thing he does. So yeah, basically, watch this space as far as Starlight stuff goes. Lots of things that I want to do, and I'm going to be having lots of time with which to try and try to tackle these ideas. So. A sun catcher type thing would be really cool. I don't know how I would do it, but it does sound cool. And I think that's about it for today. Because I've run out of things to say. I don't need to experiment in glasswork, I have too many hobbies already. Too many. Too many hobbies. And not enough time. Cat tags, what's cat? Say so there's a cat and there is no cat. I could get a cat. I'm sure I could find an unwilling cat. Vicky! Hey! Okay. I'm cat. Don't stand in paint, please. Cat bum, exactly what everyone wants to see. So yes, I'll be finishing up some of these babies. That's what have I got so far. Base colours on a few. And some naked ones. And these will, oops. These will be at SunnyCon. So. If anyone goes to SunnyCon, please come and see me. I should have where I'm actually going to be situated uh, probably this week. So I can tell you exactly where I'm going to be. So, yeah, that's it. Like I said, watch this space. Um, I'm going to be trying to do lots of streaming over the summer, and you can watch me probably just paint and dry. <laughs> And sculpting. Um, I hope you try a couple of new things though. Um, I might do a spinning if anyone wants to watch me spin. Some yarn. Like I said, if there's anything that anyone wants to see me do live stream wise, let me know. Uh, let's see, sign ups for the workshop will be um, just on Saturday. There will be no set time, it must be when it opens. So come on over and sign up. Um, currently there's 20 places, 
but if I can manage enough things to be painted, I might open that up to 30. We shall see how it goes. I need to make 20 things first. And those things might actually be resin cast sleepy babies, which are the best. So, yeah. Just to offer it, like as many people as possible a chance to have a go because lots of people seem interested and I don't want to tell anyone that they can't do it because that would break my heart. So, yeah, so I'll possibly see people at SunnyCon. There will be more streams before then, so I will catch people another time. Bye!